What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction. Back with some more George Kranz. I'm going back to his 1994 album, Sticky Drusen. Once again, shout out to Han Solo for taking us on this eccentric deep dive, along with a couple others. Uh, and indeed, the next Shatner reaction should be in the next batch. So uh, I do appreciate all the uh, musical assistance you provided to the channel, including those of a more idiosyncratic nature. But the next tune on Sticky Juice, and as we get toward the end of the album, I think there's maybe two more tracks after this, is Calm Down, which I feel like in a lot of situations is, generally speaking, good advice. I suppose there are some situations where there's a greater need for intensity, but um, people tend to make better decisions emotionally and logically when they are thinking from a calm state of mind as opposed to a very intense or maybe angry state of mind. So. Um, yeah, I'm curious what the the dynamic will be here. It could be a general principle, it could be a prescription or a request to someone else, it could be a shouted command, you know, calm down, um, or there will be consequences. So obviously the nature of the phrase and in what direction it's headed would notably affect the meaning. And obviously when it comes to crayons, it's not so much about the meaning as we've gone through these songs, but the way in which he renders tracks compositionally, often using voices where instruments would normally be expected. So let's find out what this is. This is George Kranz. The tune is Calm Down and it's from the 1994 album Sticky Drusen. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, so I have to live in the 
context uh, but like I said I don't think that's really the point it's just you're waiting to see what parts will be done by voices and it's almost all the parts <clears throat> obviously there's drums um, and in some of his tracks it feels like maybe there's you know a guitar or some real instrument but most of the work is done by the vocal so number one again you just got to give credit to the creativity of composition but it's this hilarious thing to me the more we go into his music where like okay so you're gonna have some lower voiced men do this like bass line loop for the track. Well, what syllables are you gonna use? Like, you know, I suppose you could like have them saying words in English or German, but I don't think it's either. I think he like most of the vocalizations that serve as melody or bass or percussion in the tune are like gibberish words. So I'm really amused by the way like probably he's thinking that like certain syllables will have a better sound and sound better in a vocal loop than other potential syllables that would still hit with the same rhythmic quality so i'm just fascinated by the process of okay like i have this melody in my head but what are the words for it going to be bubba da boo baba like you just you know you could write anything but then he'll pick particular syllables so i wonder how deliberate that is if it really is sort of an off the cuff it kind of rhymes or it has a good sound to it or if he's like painstakingly, um, you know, toying with like tinkering with, you know, syllables or particular sounds or letter sounds, you know, in a larger sequence of, again, what I think is essentially gibberish words. So, um, yeah, that's something that is increasingly drawing my attention as we listen. So once again, shout out to Han Solo for sharing this. Uh, and again, I will continue to go through um, all of the, let's say, uh, misfits of the musical world, um, you know, your Shatners, your Nimoy's, um, I feel like, you know, maybe Kran's music, like, I wonder, like, is his music even more niche than someone like Shatner, who covers a lot of famous tunes? Yeah, his vocal delivery is famously idiosyncratic, um, but I've been noticing while I've been going through the, the, what is it, Spaced Out album, um, or is that the Nimoy one? I think it's the Nimoy one. Uh, oh yeah, Seeking Major Tom, what am I saying? The Seeking Major Tom album, the instrumentation on it is like, you know, there's some good guitar work and some cool drum work and it's like, the production is more like typical or standard or like pop friendly than the sounds of the production here, which I think if you play this on like a, a top 40 hits radio station, people would be like, what is this? I don't like what? I don't even know what I'm hearing right now. So um, I do wonder, like, would you folks consider this to be more niche than someone like Nimoy or someone like Shatner? Um, I especially wait to hear Han Solo's response to this, because, um, again, as someone who brought these different um, people outside, like, the mainstream, like, popular music, radio play um, artists to my attention, I'm curious what you might say. So in any case, let me know what you think of this tune. I will see you next time. Peace.